My name is Heather Corbett. I'm a member of the Bates Alumni Engagement Team. And I'm pleased to, again that you can attend the third program of this year's Alumni Professional Development Series and the second program of this series, Staying Connected While Working Apart. Bates Alumni Engagement is really pleased to be working with the team at Lighthouse Career Associates, which is led by Bates' own Ann Shields Class of 1980. I wanted to give everybody a few housekeeping items before we get started. First, as you may have noticed, this program is being recorded. If during the presentation you decide you prefer gallery or speaker view, you're welcome to toggle between those two options in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Um, out of respect for our presenter, everyone will be muted during the presentation. And if you have questions throughout the program, please either use the raise your hand function or write your question in the chat. And with all of that behind us, it's my pleasure to introduce or reintroduce today's featured speaker. The owner of Rocky Road Consulting, Deborah Rocky's career reflects the recrafting of progressive positions from field ecologist to organizational development leader and all focused on using her strengths and her values. Drawing on a background in theater, improvisation and development, Rocky works with individuals and teams using applied improvisation, change leadership and ecosystems thinking. She's a global career development facilitator and executive coach and a certified change practitioner and has worked with numerous individuals regarding succession planning, career development, and learning development. So Rocky, thank you again for leading us through these conversations today. Thank you so much, Heather. I, I just, I am exhausted when I hear the introduction of myself because I'm like, really? <laughs> but it's, it's like, oh my gosh, if that's what it took to get me here today with you, I love it because it is such a great topic to talk about staying connected and what that means in today's world and how it can help leverage us into the future. And this is the second part of um, this talk. And last month we did it with a focus on employees. And now we're looking at it. What does this mean for leaders and managers as far as working with individuals and teams and helping them stay connected as we lean into the future of our work? Um, so thank you for attending. And thank you to those who are listening to this as a recording. Um, I'm very, very um, uh, honored that you chose to be here and chose to listen to this and that you are interested in how can we make our future a better place. So um, if we go to the next slide, um, I have uh, the wonderful producer of Meredith helping out with that. So um, uh, there's, there's what I look like when uh, I'm doing theater and that's my theatrical headshot. <laughs> So, um, and hello again, and uh, let's just uh, take a look at what we're going to cover today and what we're going to have some fun talking about. So um, we're going to start out with a reflection because I, if you're like me, you're coming from someplace else, this might be your lunch hour, you might be eating lunch as we're going through this or whenever you're listening to it, and, and, and we're all coming from someplace else, but yeah, we've made this intentional choice to be here today. So how can we just sort of ground ourselves through that? So a reflection, then we're going to talk about knowing your team and just doing an exchange on, on what are some things that we know work really well? What are some best practices that you've done? What are some best practices that I've done? And um, see if we can build on that and get excited about trying on some different things with your team. Um, we'll talk about change because our future, absolutely guaranteed, will have change in it. <laughs> we all know that. And so, um, how do we use change as a factor of being intentional about our future? What's changing? What's not changing? And then how can we show up being competent and confident in change and be a change leader and a connected leader? So I hope there's something in that brief overview that you went, oh, yes, that sounds great. Um, so let's take a minute and just do a reflection. and. Um, on the next slide, there's a couple of questions, and these are actually taken sort of from the Buddhist tradition of, of being fully present and awakened to the situation, to, to be able to stop in whatever is going on around you and pause and breathe and sort of reflect, where am I? 
And, and so we're, we're all in sort of the same place. We're all virtual, but we are all coming together right now as a community in being able to share some insights and some thoughts and some ideas about staying connected from a leadership mindset. So that sounds good. That's, that's where we're all at. What am I doing? Well, I'm hopefully being fully present. I'm, you know, uh, maybe taking some notes. I'm going to participate as I am inspired to do so. Uh, that's your choice, right? But the what I'd like you to reflect on for a minute is what did it take for this moment to arise? And you can do that from a place of personal reflection, like what did I have to do? You know, maybe it was something you had to do with the kids in daycare. Maybe it was something you had to do with a meeting and you had to put aside. Uh, maybe you had to rearrange your schedule. Maybe what it took for this moment to arise is somebody had to invent Zoom, right? Somebody had to create and establish Bates College, right? Somebody had to go to school and graduate in order to be an alumni and be invited. So just take a moment and think on that last question. What did it take for this moment to arise for you? And in appreciation of that, if you wouldn't mind, write into chat. What did it take for this moment to arise for you? I'd love to hear what comes to mind. I'm going to start us off by just saying, you know, I just needed to take a few minutes personally and, and ground myself to go, I'm, I'm doing something really important here. Daniel, um, every step that I took, whether I knew it or not, ooh, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else have some insights? Yeah, Heather, making the decision to join the Bates community. Perfect. And Kelly, generally reevaluating personal and professional priorities, specifically clearing my calendar, mm, creating space to make it happen. And I'm sure you did that not only for today, but that is a almost ritual. Heidi, this moment working from home. Professional acquaintance reached out about a job opening that otherwise probably wouldn't have thought about. Ah, such a nice reflection, a decision, and how that can just take you in another wondrous path. It's good. Well, as other uh, come up, and uh, Kira says, you know, a, a concerted effort on self care and connection. Yeah, to really think about how am I taking time for myself, right? Connecting with others. So I invite you to, you know, think about this as a reflection. It's at any point when you're just wanting to be a little more present to where you are and what's going on in your days as, you know, a manager or a leader or an individual of, you know, our very busy days and just ask those three questions of yourself. Where am I? What am I doing right now? And give a little appreciation to what did it take for this moment to arise? Very good. I used to play a game with myself when I was a little child and, and I used to say, well, what did it take for this piece of bread to be on my plate? 
Well, it, it took the cook cooking it, you know, if I gave a penny to the cook and then, well, and then the cook, you know, it was the, the flour at the store. Okay. We'll give a penny to the grocer and then, okay. The farmer who grew the wheat, oh, they get a penny. And then, okay. The truck driver who drove the wheat, it, you get it. Right. And I would just try to think it was sort of a game of the house that Jack built, but just thinking by all the people in the community that come together to bring you to where you're at today. So a reflection is a beautiful thing to use to just stop, pause, reflect, and then choose where you're going to go from there. And to be able to connect with others and just say, where are we all at? I just offer that as our very first tool of today. <laughs> A reflection. What a nice thing. On the next slide, you know, I, I want to talk about this algorithm of, okay, how do you effectively connect with your team as a leader, as a manager? We're looking at the future and it's like, I don't think anybody's really figured it out, but a lot of people are working to figure it out. A lot of people are on the topic of connectivity, engagement, how do we make things even more effective and meaningful in our work life and our personal lives? So, you know, if, if you read, you know, blog sites and listen to podcasts, you know, the short list is always, oh, you need to keep an open line of communication or, you know, you need to use collaboration tools, collaboration tools being Teams or WebEx or, or Zoom, you know, things that bring the virtual in to make everybody have a presence or, or, you know, hold weekly meetings, develop that cadence that there's a level of certainty that people know it's like every Monday at eight o'clock, I know I will be together and I can project that into my future. So that's a, that's a good thing. It makes me feel certain, but, but that's the short list. I mean, you, you pick up anything and you see that, right? I, I'm wondering, um, what is it that that you go, yeah, but there's got to be more than that, right? And so what is something that you might be thinking of or that you've read that um, turns that short list into something a little more meaningful? Like when you think of connectivity with your teams, the other people that are in your communities, what what do you think of and what would be helpful for for you to hear more about during this session so if you wouldn't mind can you put that into chat if something comes up or i'll even invite you to take yourself off of mic and um share with the rest of the group What is that nut you are trying to crack when it comes to connectivity? Mm. So Heidi, thank you. If you're not the manager and items on the short list aren't in place, how do you get them started? Nice. Great. And and I wrote in there, you know, because I constantly ask myself this question every day, you know, as a leader is like, how do I sustain and keep it up? Um, you know, and just keep it going. Because it's 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 a lot of work to maintain. So we can talk about, you know, how do you get started? And then how do you hold the gain? Understanding the difference between busyness versus productivity and maintaining. Yeah, just doing it to appear like, oh no, we're connected. We got it going on, you know, but, but really having meaning and sense making around what you're doing. Great, thank you, Kira. 
Good. So if other things pop up, I invite you to put them into chat. You know, I'll keep an eye on that. But uh, thanks for adding to the short list. And, and let's talk about some of those things. Um, so on the next slide, um, we have our first topic. And, and that's like really knowing your team. Well, you know, we've been doing uh, the big shift to remote work for a couple of years now. I think most organizations or if it's not an organization, you know, you're in some community of people. I mean, the, the world of working virtually and remote and connecting that way is now getting sort of like, yeah, we got it. We, we know how to do it. We're getting comfortable with it. In fact, you know, there's, there's even some new techniques that um, are, are becoming, you know, very creative and popular. But it really does boil down to you know, knowing your team, not just, well, who works for me? What was their start date? Um, uh, you know, what their schedule is. That is all very important and even more so important when you're working virtually. But how do you take that to the next level? So I thought I'd do this little segment and I've been working with a lot of teams on this and um, uh, it's evolved into a tool, which I call the P2. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing, uh, uh, great about the term P2, but it, it was just a short thing for profiles and preferences. Like in the teams that I work with, I, I wanted sort of a team profile to, to always keep top of mind and ready access. Like, like who are my team and what are all these things I need to know about them and what are their preferences? Because now they're not face-to-face -face with me and I wanna keep that top of mind. So I'd like to show you uh, some of the things that, that went into that. And on the next slide, before I show you the actual tool, I just always think it's important that we talk about you know, the six basic human needs and um, you know, how those come into people having a whole and complete you know, life. It's, it's, our hope is that everybody has all six of these areas satisfied. But when we're designing something, it's good to, to keep these in mind. And just, you know, I always like to start with them that are in pairs, you know, so certainty versus uncertainty. We, we love to work in an environment where we have some certainty. These are things we know to be true and we can bank on them and they give us security because they're not changing. But it would be a very boring and dull life if things never changed. And so we also like variety. We never eat the same thing every day after day, right? We like that variety. So there's a little bit of balance between that. You know, same with significance and connection. You know, significance is, am I significant? Do I feel I'm providing value? Do I have an identity? Do I know who I am and do people know who I am? And connection, then how do I belong? How am I included? How am I a part of this group I'm with? So balancing those and then growth and contribution, growth being more of self, my emotional, my physical, my spiritual growth. Am I developing? Am I becoming more of me, of who I want to be and who I aspire to be? And then contribution, how does that show up when I'm with others? And how am I contributing to a better future, a greater good? So six needs, we're gonna really focus on the connection piece, right? And then we just realize in context, they're all really, really important. So on the next slide, we see, well, why is that important in a manager's role or a, a leader's role? And when I send these, these have these slides sent out to you, I'm going to make sure I have, have the neurological uh, uh, research uh, quoted that refers to this in case anybody wants to go to the journal articles and read more about this. But just the positive relationship between employees and managers and how that increases actual activity in the brain that is associated with openness to new ideas and social orientation towards others. So again, developing that positive relationship between the employee and their leader, the employee and their manager, it actually is reshaping and rewiring the brain. And we talk about the ideas, the ability to create and ideate 
you know, that's innovation. And when we talk about social orientation to others, that's collaboration. And I can't think of two bigger buzzwords, right? You know, today for effective leaders, who doesn't want to have a team? Who doesn't want to work with a group of people who are innovative and collaborative? So that connection really has benefits. Plus, it just is more meaningful to work at a connected level, right? So let's take a look at some of these tools. Um, there, are, there are four sections of this P2. Again, I'll just say P2, but for me, it's profiles and preferences. You'll see that these were built with just a simple word table. I have seen very analytical types create whole spreadsheets. I have seen people just develop it on a PowerPoint slide so they can put them in their meetings and just remind each other. So whatever format works for your team, you can invite the team and have them co-create. What does our P2 look like? But the first part of, is the basics, you know, just to say, okay, who's on the team? You know, name, role, these days, where people are working versus where your work is could be two different things. So, you know, knowing the time zone, where they're at, have they declared themselves to be hybrid or remote or on site? What's their work schedule? You know, we, we let flexible scheduling and flexible work now be part of it too, so that we can attract the right talent in. So people could have different work schedules. It's not always eight to five anymore. Um, Resources and technology, they might, we have people that live in very remote places that don't have great bandwidth uh, and, and are competing with other things, you know, and then uh, is there anything to know about, you know, culture or, or language? So um, these are sort of, you know, just the basics and, and as everybody was shifting, like during COVID, during the pandemic, you know, the location time zone and whether they were still coming into the office or were they sort of hybrid, you know, what that meant, what their work schedule, just depending on the size of the team you work with can be a very handy just to have this on a single list. The next slide gets into um, beyond the basics. Well, what sort of access? to them do you have? So, um, you know, it used to be, well, I know I'll catch them at the cafeteria at lunchtime or, you know, have coffee or something or run into them at the water cooler. But, but now it's like, like when I reach out and make a connection, what's the preference there? So do they prefer, you know, if there's an online chat, like if you're working with Microsoft Teams and there's the ability to chat with one another, do they like that? Uh, is it, um, you know, cell phone? Is it email? Whatever. Do they have times that are better than others to reach? How, how to alert if there's an urgency? You know, it's like, is that like, you know, email's fine, but boy, if it's an emergency, feel free to call me on my cell getting clear about that. And then response time, which has amazed me, people's response to this as to, um, oh yeah, I, um, I respond rather quickly. What does rather quickly mean? Within two hours. And somebody else could say within two minutes, you know, so people's definitions of what that means is sort of good to know. Um, and then any challenges. That, that just might be aware, whatever that means. So again, totally customizable, you know, thinking about access, what would that mean in um, your team or your group? And again, this, these could be a work team, this could be a community team you're working with, um, all different ways to use this and, and really asking people how, how would it best serve them? So the third part of this on the next slide would be, energy. Um, and uh, if, you know, you're working on a team, maybe you use Meyer Briggs or DISC or Insights, you know, any of those style sort of assessments. Um, you know, if you have them, it, it's good to put there. Some people use standout and engagement profile, whatever. It's, it's nice to have a central place where you can just go, oh yeah, remind me, what is that? And then, you know, to be able to just ask, in addition to that style, you know, 
what would people say that energizes them and what drains me? What energizes me and what drains me? And then how to recognize me, because we know that people like to be recognized in different ways. Some people privately, some people publicly, some people not at all, some people flowers and chocolate. I mean, what is that? And so having the team, you know, come together and say, what are the important attributes we'd like to know about each other? So you decide what the column headings are. And once you've reached that decision, you know, to go ahead and let everybody self-populate it. So, um, you know, they, they can fill that out. And when we go to the next slide, you'll see there are some more personal data here, like a well, service anniversary date, you know, how long have they been with the organization or, you know, the club or whatever it is, you know, that you're doing. Birth date, you know, here's where we get into the sensitivity as people are populating it. They, they might go, oh, I'm okay with, you know, what month and, and day, but definitely not the year. I don't want to share that. Um, and then, you know, other preferences they have that are more personal hobbies, interests, passions, could be membership. Those could be so important to your team that you want each of those to be a column. But the thing is, when you, you decide on that as a team, if somebody opts to say, I'm not comfortable sharing that, everybody is like cool with it. Oh, we respect that. That's, you know, it's, it's okay if some people leave some things blank, but you could collectively decide what is really important for us to be optimal as a team that we have this information and then which of it is more optional. So those are like, like four slices of knowing your team and what are some of the things you could think about. And if you're getting started in like building connectiveness, having a conversation just about what do what would be helpful for us to know about each other? And the cool thing is this doesn't get cast in cement. You know, this becomes something that you can refer to. You could say, hey, quarterly, we're going to commit to stepping back and updating this and, and just keeping it current. Some teams like to add questions like, what was your favorite movie you last watched? You know, just so that they get in the habit of keeping it up to date and current. Um, I've had teams that that love this because they uh, do onboarding. They, they constantly got people who are retiring, leaving, and they have new people coming in and they find it as a very helpful tool that the person immediately has a profile and understands those preferences people wanna share it's, it's like, what a great way to give some insight and, and to help facilitate that onboarding. So uh, I think with that, uh, the next slide, I think we'd like to have some discussion. And um, I am going to ask you, I, I can't tell exactly how many we have, so I'm gonna reach out to Meredith and, and give her advice and counsel on, should we just have one breakout? Do we have enough to have two breakouts? But uh, we'd like to put you into breakout group and introduce yourself to one another and have a conversation about this thing called the P2. You know, have you done something like that before? Uh, you know, what would you add to it for based on the, the people you lead, you manage, you, you meet with, uh, what would you add to it? What has worked for you? What do you still need help with that it's like, oh, this is good and I still need help with this in this approach. Um, so we'd like you to just have a conversation on that. Give you, a, I think about 15 minutes. We'll check in in a minute. And um, report back as a large group. So Meredith, uh, tell us what your math tells us. <laughs> sure. Uh, so we, it looks like we have about enough for two separate breakout rooms um, okay. and we have between three to four people in each. Okay, that is great. So if you notice the little cell phone taking a picture, if it would be helpful to grab your camera, take a picture of this slide. So it's like, what is it we're supposed to talk about? Again, this idea of the tool. Um, 
So walk through it and just, you know, what, what uh, popped out for you that you go, oh, I sort of like this, or you go, I didn't see this. I would add this, or maybe you've already had experience. What has worked for you? How, how would you share that? Or what are you still looking for help on when it comes to knowing your team? So I would say, uh, because we have a, a lower, let's, let's go for uh, 12 or 13 minutes. I think we can slice a little off of that. Um, and we'll put you in breakout rooms and look forward to hearing what you come up with. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Hope you had a good conversation and would love to hear just whatever insights you had if you're doing some of this or you feel you still need some help in some area. So uh, who would like to volunteer to go first for their room? I guess I'll I'll volunteer for the for the Lisa Kelly room since we're gonna be departing sooner, but you jump Sounds in. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Christina was on with us, and I think she was sort of uh, auditing. I don't know what the right term is, but she was she was seeing how this program is run. So she had to hop off for an in person meeting. She wanted to be sure we all conveyed. So she's she's living a hybrid life. Love uh, that. Yeah. So I guess we I guess some themes we talked about is um, we both have different numbers of people officially reporting to us, so that would change the dynamic a little bit, um, but one of the things we talked about is making a point to have our um, Zoom-like connections as personal, and, like a nice mix of personal and professional. Um, that's really worked for me um, through mm -hmm. COVID times was establishing a, in my instance, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every morning, 8.30, be present or not as your, as your schedule allows, of course, but the every other day and a mix of how was your weekend, what's going on for you, naturally led to a place of knowing each other may, way better than we did pre-COVID. And um, that mix of personal understanding with what's the work ahead when, you know, on Monday, what do we need to get done this week? Who's working on it? Do you have need support? And then Wednesday is like, are we going to make it to Friday? Because <laughs> I think Lisa <laughs> said, right? Sort of what are the pressures of the week? And then Friday, how can we best unplug at the end of the day? What do we need to get done? And again, do you need support? Um, it checked a lot of the boxes, Deb, that you were describing around, do we know each other personally, right? Do we know where people yeah. are at? Do we know um, what's going on personally that might be impacting how they can be present at work for the week? Um, so that was, I don't know, one thing that, mm -hmm. that we chatted about a bit um, and acknowledging that I think Christine said, well, um, Zoom fatigue is a real thing, right? And so um, being clear on how people, um, what is the best use of their time and how do you get work done in a way that allows people to show up video if they're ready? Or as I said, I've said this numerous times in, for my team, there's no video shaming, right? If you need to be off video for any number of reasons, that's okay too. So allowing and see how they're just, went off camera just to, just to, <laughs> just to illustrate the point, right? So, so anyway, just trying to be respectful of people and their boundaries. I don't know. Yes. I'll stop and Lisa chime in with anything I'll say. Yes. No, I, I, I think you, you covered it. And, you know, also talking about how people who aren't necessarily part of our direct reporting team can impact our workload, be it client or vendors or, um, or, or folks outside our kind of direct line of reporting or, you know, who don't necessarily even work for us, but who still mm -hmm. impact our ability to be productive. Mm -hmm like that ad it's like taking taking your key stakeholders into effect too and what are the relationships now that you have with them in this virtual dynamic world so great thank you both yeah i think that was room two or was that room one <laughs> you're room one you were okay yeah. room one room one was Kira, Daniel, and Heidi, and you know, we first we we used the P two first to introduce as we were introducing ourselves to stop to start to get to know each other first a little bit and discover you know Heidi is actually in an office within you know a system where she has managerial oversight but lacks a manager and then Daniel and I are both consultants with having you know worked with. Um, 
work for either within companies or corporations or working with clients that are, uh, are of such. So uh, we were very, um, you know, we looked at the P2 and I have to say that I, I wasn't familiar with it, but obviously instinctively the questions that are on there is a way and knowing that uh, the way in which we uh, interact with folks, whether it's a Zoom meeting or whether it's in person as well, you always want to connect in some way, either it's through a shared project that you're working on or a shared you know, challenge or a shared uh, goal or maybe a shared interest that you might you know, notice. I mean, then we look at you and we see birds behind you. So eventually, you know, if we had time, we'd ask you why, the, what's with the birds? You know, you already shared your theater background, but, and you, you know, so you would probably tell us why you have bobbing die, dice as earrings, you know, it's got to, there's a story behind it. And that's a great way for, for people to get to know each other in a very, not non-confrontational and not super nosy way, but in a true kind of human curiosity way. So we thought that the P2 was, you know, just sort of uh, was a great reflection of what we do. And we also thought that it was, we would never send it out as an Excel sheet, you know, because we thought that, that there was information on there that really is not appropriate to be asked, nor is it, um, or, it, you know, so we just, we would just use it as sort of a conversation guide more so than not. Mm -hmm. But we also thought um, it would be, it's, it's, so it does work. So I guess the, the answer to that question is that it works, but not sort of as a sort of, um, you know, like a physical tool that you would send to somebody, It'd be more sort of a script to make sure that this is a way that you can connect with people, because some folks may not be good at connecting to folks within a professional uh, environment or, you know, within um, their company. They just may not feel that that, that that's right. So it's good in that way. Um but then again, you know, as I said, Daniel and I were on our own. We deal with a, whole, a lot of different people. So we all have an approach with respect to connecting with folks because we're consultants now. But Heidi, on the other hand, you know, works within um, a school environment and, no, you know, has had a revolving door of managers. So the question becomes, how does she create stability or a support system or gain a sounding board? that's sort of steady state. So maybe a tool like this is helpful as well when a new manager comes in or she you know, wants to reach out and have a conversation with colleagues who might be in a similar situation. So Heidi, I, I don't think I, did I, did I say that correctly? Did I reflect your, I think your, you your really situation? Did. I think the, the only other thing that I'm thinking about that we sort of touched on is that this is not a static thing. I mean, th this does not replace ongoing communication mm -hmm. um, because People change, your thoughts change. My struggles today could be very different from what they are even two weeks from now. Um, so it's it's a tool. It is not a be all end all. Absolutely. Yes. Good. Yes, that's that's good that. From that team. Yeah. That yep. Great insight. So that's where, yep. Good. And, and that idea of keeping it dynamic, um, uh, I was sharing in the, the big room that we were uh, meeting in that uh, I've seen teams that will uh, share their playlists on their P2 <laughs> just because their taste in music changes and everything. And they are trying to hardwire a way to intentionally go in. Like when I change as a person, when my preferences change, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm going out there and keeping it reflective of where I'm at as well. So they just saw things like, you know, their favorite movies and their playlists and, you know, stuff like that as a way to, to go out and give some insights. Um, but yeah, the, again, the whole secret is what is meaningful for the team and using it as an intact team, right? A trusted partnership team. Although I have had some teams that have said, we work so closely with this other team in the organization. In fact, we've got so many integration points that we're going to ask ourselves if we could either share our P2s with one another or co-create one. And so I thought that was an interesting approach. So, if, you know, it's just a starter place to, to have a conversation. So thank you for your insights on that. Yeah. Yes. No problem on the early departures because that's why we record it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, if we get any any other closing thoughts of anyone who wanted to just add any anything that uh, 
you're like, and I still need this. So I think the only other takeaway that I sort of had for this tool was that it would be important for if we were sharing this beyond our manager, that you had control over what you were sharing, that maybe you'd condense it into some sort of a, a profile of what you wanted to share with your team if you're a member of a team, because you might want your manager to know all 30 of these things, but not, I mean, not everyone. It, 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 that felt like there was some personal space that we had to respect with the tool. Absolutely. Total consensus on, on what is on there and um, honoring and respecting, uh, you know, areas that people choose not to share. Absolutely. Okay, if we could go back to the slides, um, Meredith, and bring those up. Just wanted to share with you some other things, especially as we talk about, you know, who knows what the future is going to be like? Can anybody tell me what's what's the next two years look like? <laughs> you know, we, we don't know other than the fact that there is going to be change in it, right? This is something we can't do. And so when, you, when you're working <clears throat> with teams and connecting with teams and, and really, you know, sort of balancing that certainty versus uncertainty, you know, it's it's good to show that you know I can be comfortable with change. I can be comfortable with ambiguity, but it's also good to talk about what things are not changing. And as a team, you know, if you have a practice during a meeting, or you know, just even thinking about using it as possibly a reflection, to to open that up as a topic to say, boy, we are going through a lot of change recently. Let's just focus on what's not changing. And when I say that, what's not changing? What are some things that come to mind? How would you answer that question for your team or your organization? What's not changing? Anything that you could throw into chat on that? Or grab the microphone and just tell us. What's not changing? Well, I'll tell you what I most commonly hear when that question is asked, people will point back to their mission, vision, and core values of their organization or their team, you know, to say, let's, let's reflect on that. You know, we've been around for a hundred years. We want to be around for a hundred more years. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is not changing. Some people will state, you know, the reason why we chose to work here, that's not changing. The reason to serve our customers, our clients, our patients, you know, the very reason why we were drawn to this work is not changing within me. And sometimes that's just grounding in itself to talk about, you know, let's talk about what's not changing because so much is going on. So I'd like you to keep that in mind, um, what's not changing. And then now that we've, we've gone, okay, that would be a good topic to have conversation with people. Let's talk about um, change a little bit and what is changing. And and I, I love this. Um, going back to medieval days, right? Of, of, of um, oh, before I do that, here's another good question you could use as a reflection, right? What's not changing? Another one would be, what advice would you give to your 18 year old self about change? You know, cause I'm gonna assume we're all older than 18 here. And so, you know, it's just like, yeah, hopefully with change, with experience and exposure, you become a little wiser. And so reflecting back, you know, what would you say? Yeah, so change is opportunity. Heather, is that your, what you would tell your 18 year old self? Yeah, go ahead and, and throw into chat if you can think of something else. I'd love to hear what you say there. Um, I've had some people, when you ask that question, they'll go, could we change that from 18 to 25? Because as an 18-year-old, I don't think I'd understand. Change is constant, good, positive, and beneficial, Kira. Thank you. Yeah. Meredith says, it happens often and to be flexible with change. Ooh, very wise. 
Yeah. So we can reflect back on that because, you know, we've, we've had the ability to make some sense about change and what's going on. But um, as I said, looking at the medieval days, and if you go to the next slide, um, you know, when people were, were illiterate and, you know, they didn't have the ability to, to read and write and, you know, the sort of communication dissemination tools we have today, you know, what did they choose to, to do? Uh, if we go to the next slide, they, they looked at storytelling. They looked at carving pictures into rock. They looked at tapestries and that's how they decided to tell the story of change and what is happening. And um, so, you know, just spending a little time on this to go, okay, this is called the wheel of change or the wheel of life. And um, I like to look at the, the one that's color, you know, it, just a couple of examples here, but you see the woman in the red dress is sort of fate, you know, turning the circle around. And um, let's just look at each one of these stages individually and, and use chat to sort of dialogue about this. If we go to the next slide and focus at the very, very top, um, happiness is what's connoted here, right? So put into chat, what do you see at that position of the wheel? Just what are some short descriptors that you'd use? How is happiness portrayed? It's a little man. Yeah. Optimism. Is he smiling? I can't quite tell. Um, you know, there's a there's a crown, so it's it's sort of like crown and a scepter. Yeah, enjoying what you do. He's sitting at the top, so the view is better, right? It might be a good view from the top there. Yeah, so enjoying what you do, Daniel. So it's like, I, I think, you know, when we think of change, it's like, well, this is a good place to be. We're up high, the view is good. We're well clothed. <laughs> you know? We got a lot of fortune going on there with, with what we are. We're succeeding. It's comfortable up here. I have a routine that's working. I'm sitting on top of things, right? So that is a great place to be. We all want to be there. But then fate might turn that wheel a little bit. And on the next slide, we see loss. So, and thank you, Heidi, the stability too, that was up there. But now what do we see with loss? What are some of the things you see connoted here? actively trying to change the situation. So yeah, I would say the person is like falling off the wheel, off of position, but it looks like they're trying to grab on to change the situation. Loss of stability. Probably thinking, I want to go back to where I was, you know, but there's a gravitational pull going on. Yeah, trying to hang on. Trying to hang on, but it's like, I just, it's slippery here. You know, gravity is working against me. Yeah, so feels like we're falling. And then once again, fate turns the wheel and we are at the next slide, the next place which is suffering. Now, what do you see? Yeah, so I think, you know, Daniel, like trying to hang on during change is the loss and, and the suffering you're really trying to hang on at that point. What else do you see in that guy? Hanging on, but also looking ahead. Hmm. Hitting rock bottom. It's 
So the hat has fallen off. What, what does that signify? Sort of losing things here. Loss of some control. Yeah, loss of identity. Ooh, with the loss of the hat. I like that. So it's sort of like, you have to go through this part in order to make your way up on the other side of the wheel. So there's no like getting off and jumping back on or, you know, bypassing this. A lot of people will say the only way through change is through, you know, experiencing it. Uh, just worrying about the essentials, like who needs a hat? I just need to make it through this. Yes, well, those are great. So the next turn, though, we start to see hope. So hope, what do we see there? Not hanging on, so maybe a little more stability person appears upright, right? Somebody has got to tell me what's going on with those shoes. He's got a fancier hat, <laughs> very true. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, looking your best, being optimistic, hope moving forward, looking for the best way to go. Yeah. So looking, you know, around, absolutely. So beautiful, looking upward. And even though with hope, they know they're looking upward, they're looking back to go, we do know that eventually when hope turns back to happiness, they may be in the same position, but they're not in exactly the same place. And, you know, we've experienced that with the pandemic, you know, when we return to normalcy, when we go back to where we, we never go back to where we were because of what we experienced, what we've learned, what we've grown, how we've connected with others at a different level. We are now back to a new place, a different place. So interesting that that is how change was, was sort of viewed back then and the different phases of it. Um, and sometimes, you know, as, as you have these slides, it's interesting to use these slides as a reflection when you're together with your teams and just say, where are we at? You know, as you're experiencing some change in your organization or on your team, just say, hey, when people didn't even know what was happening, they thought it was a woman in a red dress turning the wheel, you know, we can talk about it you know, but, but where are we at? What are we feeling? And, and where do we see ourselves going? So it, it just makes another nice tool to bring people together, to focus on something they can point to and talk about some symbolism there. So uh, the last thing I want to leave you with is um, a couple tools to uh, just, you know, again, bring this connectiveness together and um, if you go to the next slide, uh, yeah, just, just, you know, how do you, how do you be the change leader? How do you, you help to sustain this work of change and um, show up as a connective leader yourself and always thinking, um, you know, how am I leading people? How am I leading people through the change? How am I leading people through the change together? So uh, just again, next slide is just a touch base again on those six basic human needs with connection being ever so popular. Um, a really good thing to think about is um, the idea of a ritual. So, you know, you might have established a P2, you all got together and decided these are the fields we want. This is how we're going to share it. This is what we all feel comfortable sharing. But, you know, how do we change our behaviors of when we're together, whether it be in-person, hybrid, or virtual. And, and might there be 
you know, some sort of ritual that we could acknowledge and celebrate when we're together. So on the next slide, you know, just a, a few things about a ritual, getting into that. I think that's such a beautiful picture. Um, but a, a ritual is, is not just a habit. There is real intention about a ritual. It is developed and meant to do something to move you forward. So on the next slide, it talks about, you know, what exactly is a ritual? And it's that, that constant thing. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, just like a story. And it's sort of a constant nudge to just say, when this happens, we're going to do this so that we learn this behavior and intuitively we begin to move ourselves forward towards what that desired outcome is. So um, if you're interested, Gustavo Rosati has, has a lot of uh, things on rituals and examples of what companies like um, Zappos and uh, Patagonia and Netflix and all these different companies he's worked with, he shares their culture canvases of which ritual is a big part of what is your culture? What is your culture of connection and how do you sustain that and keep it moving forward? So, you know, it could be something as simple as, um, you know, when a certain metric, a service level is met, uh, that, that, you know, we answered uh, a, a a call average within less than two minutes or something, you know, that, that triggers something that says, oh, we can begin to celebrate that. And maybe the beginning of that is a gong is struck or a bell is rung or, you know, some message goes out. And that means we're all going to come together and acknowledge this. And then we're going to to do something in celebration or demonstrate that behavior and celebrate like the story of how we got there. Um, and the reward is that time being spent together. And so, you know, it's as leaders and working towards our future of connectivity, it's like, what rituals can you instill in a team? You know, have you ever thought about that, that behavior? Um, so the next slide is just sort of a, a worksheet and, and I'm wondering, you know, like what we've been doing by talking about reflections, you know, the three questions that we started with, or having a reflection about what would you tell your 18 year old self about change and using that as a reflective question. Um, reflections are wonderful rituals. The beginning is, or the trigger, we are going to have a meeting. So the beginning is what will we use as a reflection to ground one another and help ease the transition? Then the middle is doing the reflection. And, you know, at the end, you know, people might say, I'm going to share this reflection now that you may turn around and use this with your team or your clients. And so thinking through what are those, again, it creates that certainty, that belongingness. I know when I'm with this team, this is what we do. And this is the behavior that we create in it. I'm just curious if you put into chat, does anyone have any rituals that they do? Recognizing, celebrating that, you know, whether they're together in person or you even do virtually remote. Anything come to mind? Are people still celebrating birthdays? Vacations? Birth of new children? Goals being accomplished? There are so many things. So that, that might be something to just, uh, when you're looking for a little inspiration, maybe go out to um, uh, the site. Think on, think on what your rituals might be. If you're looking for inspiration, go out to um, Rosati's site, look at some examples of how different companies are instilling rituals and just 
consider what what might I do as a leader, as a manager, of instilling some ritual in them. Ah, we celebrate Mardi Gras in our office. Hmm. So, you know, it comes, and is that an every year thing? I mean, you've been doing that for some time. So, you know, it's coming. So I used to live in New Orleans. And ever since I've come back to live in New England, I've tried to bring Mardi Gras to my team. So I'll get a king cake shipped up from New Orleans and we'll have people wear green and gold and purple and I'll get beads. And it's just a nice way to, that's a little different from anything that's celebrated in New England. So it's fun. Yeah, bringing in something from across the miles. I, I love that. How special must that feel? It's delicious too. It's delicious, <laughs> yeah. Good. Any any other thoughts? I invite you to put those into chat of anything that um, either you're currently doing or you're thinking, oh, yeah, that makes sense to do some sort of ritual. <laughs> some companies do very, very big, elaborate things, you know, uh, so that, again, they're meaningful. Good work can be recognized. Connections can be made. Love that. Thank you, Meredith. Celebrating weddings, new babies with cards, gifts, the teens. Yeah. You know, and, and some people just like, they'll, they'll um, say on Fridays, I just make that a point to send notes of gratitude or notes of thanks. You know, Fridays tend to be a little slower for people. So, so they'll just, you know, take, five minutes and just go, it is the end of the week. I just need to stop and reflect on the good work that was done and recognize and honor people and just send them, I mean, it could be a text, an email, whatever, but just connect with them and let them know they're being thought of, they're being appreciated for the good work they do. So I encourage you to think about what are your rituals? And, um, I, th I think with that, you know, we talked about reflections being an excellent ritual, uh, you know, when you're starting a meeting or bringing um, a collection of people together with a shared vision and intention. It's like having that reflection that is um, going to ground you, transition you and inspire you for the work yet to be done. There's a, another type of reflection that I just sort of like to say is the bookend of that. So reflections always typically being at the start. On the next slide, um, we see something called a circle of gratitude. And that's, you know, at the end of me, it might not be every meeting, but long meetings, in-person meetings are really cool, but this is done a lot virtually as well. Um, is, is to say, we're just gonna end the meeting because, you know, think about how when meetings are typically ended by a clock, you know, or, okay, we got that done, we're done. But how do you sort of acknowledge your time that you spent together, the connection you have as a team, that ability to do work? And so to just be able to, you know, you might not be in a circle, but, but you are together and to be able to say, let's just take a moment of time and just place into our virtual circle some gratitude of, of what we're grateful for, what we appreciate, what this time has meant to us. And it could be, you just ask everybody to come up with one word, one word that reflects what, what was done, or it could be a short phrase, or if you had more time, you could say, you know, speak into it, however it moves you. Um, and, and sometimes it's like go around the circle, and sometimes it's just popcorn, like as people are moved to, you know, put it out there, go ahead and put it out there. So, um, you know, and, and you might have people that, you know, there's long periods of silence or people are bumping into one another doing it. It's okay. It's okay because you're just taking the time to express that in the circle. So I, um, I offer that as, as a great thing to do as well. Um, and with that, I just hope that you've come up with some ideas about 
connection and some things to think about. And as a manager, what you can do with your team. Um, I do want to point out, if you go to the next slide, um, there is a section in, in my slide deck that's called For Tomorrow. And it's just, you know, some different tools and uh, resources that are available to you. When we did the first of this series that was focused more for employees, we did an energy renewal quotient assessment to say, you know, it's not about time management, it's about energy management and where are you at with your energy and how you renew your energy. So I've put that in the back of the deck along with some of my favorite reflections to consider using them in meetings as well. So that is available for you to use. And um, other than that, the last couple of slides are just, you know, my contact information. I would love it if you connected with me and uh, just had any additional questions or you wanted to share what you were doing with your team, um, please. I, I'd love to have a conversation with you, um, keep in touch. And, and finally, um, just a thank you slide at the end to say, feel welcome to share whatever and connect with others with this material. And I think with that, uh, we have a few minutes for questions or I'll, I'll turn it over to Heather and I'll stay on as, um, as long as we have people. <laughs> so Heather, back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rocky, so much for being uh, being a part of this and sharing your expertise and engaging with us today. Did, did anyone have any final questions or thoughts that they wanted to share? Okay. I, I wanted to say, Rocky, too, I really appreciated learning more about how positive relationships between employees and managers lead to innovation and collaboration. I thought mm -hmm. that was awesome. And I loved the circle of gratitude idea. So. I may totally steal that for us. So thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you to everybody who participated. Um, I hope that you found some nuggets of your own and found this uh, program to be meaningful and informative. Um, I also want to make sure that I publicly thank Anne and the crew at Lighthouse Career Associates for the partnership that we share. And to let all of you know that to be on the lookout in the days ahead for a follow-up email, which will include the recording of the program and the follow-up survey and I think Mary's going to drop a link to the survey in the chat. Um, so please help us evaluate this session so that we can continue to grow and provide um, some quality services to our alums. So thanks again for participating. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.